Chella one, 30 24, feel to me nitty. Just feel like a read. So yo. I'm gonna, it's like almost one o'clock in the morning. I'm just gonna read some scripts. The fire is strong. So I'm just gonna see what the spirit brings on me and just read. So let's get to the book. See what it gives us. I know we start at X5. X5. X29. X5 verse 29. And it reads, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So, so that's, that's how I am now. I don't really like listening to men when they're speaking the most high word. I, like, I just listen to the most high himself. And other people don't really know my father, so I'm going to read it again. X5, chapter, X chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Yeah, and if you're um, in the truth, you'll know that Christ only came for the Israelites. He never came for anybody else. But if anybody who's not part of the nation of Israel or the seed of, seed of Israel, um, like uh, you go in or you even nations, all you need to do is submit. Be happy that us chosen ones, the true Israelites from the four corners of the earth, uh, just be happy for us that we found our God, we're coming to repent for our God, and we're going to be an example unto the whole world. So all you heathens, just be happy for us. You know? Don't hate on us, because this is the end days. The prophets today are not like the prophets of old. You know, we, we've seen all the, um, how our ancestors tried their best. There was some perfect ancestors, there were some blameless ancestors, but there was more wicked ancestors, you know, that made our nation fall. So we learn from our mistakes as a nation, as a family, as a people, you know, so we come to repent. The Brother Christ, he's our friend, you know, he's, he's our bread. And you've got to, you, you heathens and you Israelites, you wicked as Israelites, and you, you Israelites trying to come to the Most High, to my Father. You know, repentance is for you. Mm. So, the Spirit's just telling me we ought to obey God rather than men. So, we, we want to obey God, so I'm going to um, show you who my Father is. So let's start at the basics. Let's start from the beginning. Let's go. Um, oh, this was one of my favorites from the start. From when I first came into the truth. You know, the spirit was on me and everything I read. It was for my nationality. My um, my peoples. It wasn't. My doctrines are not the same as all the other Israelite doctrines. So. Hang on with the man. So, yeah, the, the doctrine I got is just for the Māori. And it's a bit late, so if I sound a bit funny, it's because I'm a little bit tired, but I want to put put more effort into the most high. If he needs a couple more hours, I'll give him a couple more hours. So this is um, Exodus chapter 15. Verse 3. I'm going to start at verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. 
the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So the Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Yahweh. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just introduce these to my father. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter ten. Deuteronomy chapter ten to Deuteronomy. I'll do, I'll just get as much as I can so you know what my God, my father's about, the God of our fathers, what he's about. So this is Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse seventeen. For the Lord your God. For the Lord, your God, is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. So, the Most High don't regard no persons. He, he doesn't really, whatever we feel, our emotions, he doesn't care about how we feel. That's the truth. He regardeth not persons or taketh any rewards. He's not doing this for, he's doing it for, to you know, he's not doing this for other people's pleasures. He's doing it for his own pleasure. Everything he wants to do, he can do. If he wants to destroy you, he can destroy you. If he wants to raise you up, he can raise you up. If he wants you dead, you dead. If he wants you living, you living. It's up to him. It's his world. This is his creation. And this is how it is. You've got to know my father. So I'm going to go to Psalms 82 verse 1. I've got to stop talking about it. I'll just let the scriptures come out. Psalms. The book of Psalms. 82 verse 1. And it reads. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. So this, 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 the Most High standeth among the congregation, and he judgeth the gods, his children. The Israelites are the gods. So if you don't know that, I'll just get it for you right now. And it said, this is verse 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. We, that's why we call ourselves Tangata. Tangata doesn't mean people. When, the, when our ancestors called ourselves Tangata, we called ourselves Tangata. We didn't call everybody Tangata. Ta, Nga, Ta. The divine ones. Tangata Whenua. Tangata Whenua. I didn't even speak to them, but I understand common sense. And the word, I'm a, I can translate words, any language. But back to the most high. So, he said, we are the gods. So, we're the gods. God means aroha. Your mom means aroha. Means to give. Ha. Your life essence. Be a ma to everybody. You know? We're the aroha. Your ma. I'm the aroha. Your ma. And I got plenty of it. And I'm be a living sacrifice unto the people. For my people. For my father. And to be the light upon the, on the earth. Mm. So... But ye shall die like men. This is verse 7. But ye shall die like men and fall, fall like one of the princes. So we're going to die like humans anyway. It's inevitable. And fall like one of the princes. But he says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. So he's telling us he's going to judge us. He judge, he's going to judge us. As it is written in verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, with the mighty men of Israel. Be well, he judges among the gods, so he's judging us, and he's our counsel. If you want counsel, get it from us. This is our counsel. And then, I'll just go to another piece that they will go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah verse 1. Nehemiah verse 1. Ooh, ooh. Got a tiny ass book in there. It's hard to find the pages, but I'm mean, good. Mm -hmm. 
money. Who you with? Who you with, homie? Go down to let's go down to five. This is uh, the book of ne Nehemiah, chapter one, verse five. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, that great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. So he's terrible. O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. He's them that love him. I just got to get this back of everything up. Even though I'm introducing to our Father, he's the God of gods. You know, he's, he's our counselor. He's our comforter. But this is Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. 7 verse 6. This is Deuteronomy 7 6. Uh, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh, he's, he's talking to the Israelites right there, and he calls the Israelites, Deuteronomy 21, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 tells you who he's, knows he's speaking to. Uh, and this is what the Lord said about his people, for thou art in holy people, holy and sacred, unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Chapter 7. Oh, verse 7, sorry. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chase you, but nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Mm. Now therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So the Most High loves us. He loves our people, he loves just, just like we love our people, we love us too. You know, he set us above all people upon the face of the earth, he chose us out of all people. And we don't want to be listening to all these other people when it comes to the most high. You want to be listening to the words that are written in the book. You know, when they say something, read. And if it's not the truth, then they're liars. And if they're not keeping the commandments of God, the most high, then they're liars, you know. Smooth face, little boys, no fringes. You know, if they got fringes on, then they must be keeping the law, you know, keeping the Sabbath holy. It's all proof. Like, I'll get it out of, um, this is Second John. I'll go to First John. I'll go to First John. Because he said, um, he'll keep, he'll keep the oath with the people who keep, who love him. He loves you, so but we gotta love him back. And how do we love him back? Do we give him a cuddle? Let's, let's ask him, how do we love him? So we go to first John, eh? Let's 
first. Um, oh, this I'm on the third. Sorry. First story. First story. Chapter five. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not hard. And that's love. That's how we show love to the Most High, is by keeping his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So that's how we how we overcome this world is by keeping the commandments. See, and then I'll go up to verse 2. By this, I'm still in 1 John chapter 5, verse 2. Uh, by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. So if you love your people and the children of the most high, if you want if you if you love the children of the most high, you must be keeping the commandments. And if you ain't keeping the commandments, you don't love the children of the most high, and they don't love you. You don't love your people, you don't love anybody really. You love the devil, the other people. But you don't want to love your own heritage. So I'm gonna go to second John, eh? 1 verse 6 And this is love That we walk after his commandments This is the commandment That as ye have heard from the beginning Ye shall walk in You heard it from the beginning What's the beginning? Back when Moses wrote, got the laws For the Israelites and gave them the law That's when they heard it from the beginning To keep the commandments you know, I told you, she loves you. Then, let's go get numbers. Just to, you know, I still want to talk about the Most High. And who he is to us. So let's get numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 19. And it reads, God is not a man that he should lie. So, our God, our Bible, our Word, our Most High, He won't lie. That's a mean. That's, I love this God. I love my Father. So, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? So, when, um, I, I was wicked as hell, you know, wicked. And I'm a son of man, and I, in the mess I said, I can repent. And after I repent, I become a son of man. And I'm, I'm a law keeper. And I won't lie to you as well. Just like my father, he won't lie to you, neither would I. Or hath, or, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So everything, everything he says, just for the good, the benefit of all. But that's the main point, really, is God is not a man that he should lie. So I don't hide your ma, don't lie. The most I don't lie. And I'll tell you. Let's go to First Corinthians. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Fourteen. So Zed, sorry about the ads, but I'm just reading. So let's go first Corinthians 
33. I know a lot of precepts of Baha. This is a uh, this is one of them. You gotta learn all these precepts, so you know. So I know the most high. For God is not oh this is uh first Corinthians chapter fourteen verse thirty-three. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So the most high is not a not an author of confusion so if people are getting confused in, in the churches means they don't know well they ain't keeping the commandments you know that's the basic repent means to return keep the commandments if you love the most high keep my commandments you know if you can't you know keep them to the best of your ability mm. until you're made perfect so it's, uh, the churches these days will teach you you can't be perfect, but the Most High teaches you if you're keeping all the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, you're perfect. You Job was perfect. Christ was made perfect. Um, you know, uh, Christ is the perfect example because he, he, you know, he taught repentance, just like how we got to teach repentance. But there's a new song that's getting played today. There's a new song getting played today. I'm just going to precept what I just said. There's a new song getting played today. But this is um, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before the old prophesied both against many countries and against great kings, kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Yeah. So we just hear the prophesies against uh, many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. You know, pestilence is like COVID nineteen is a pestilence. It's wickedness, man. This is like the days of Noah. It's all prophecy prophesized to come to pass. Uh, that's another cool one. Let's get Micah. That's another cool one. Micah, you at? You at, little homie? Micah, you are. You are, okay? So I'll get Micah 7, verse. I think it's verse 9. Oh, no. Verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. You hear that? You know, darkness. When you sit in darkness, it means when you're oppressed, you know, with nothing. You know, uh, someone else ruling really over you is in darkness. You know, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Don't rejoice against me just because I'm at the bottom. Don't rejoice against me because you've stolen everything of me, you've taken everything of me, then rejoice at that. Oh my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. So this is what this is prophecy coming to pass, I'm telling you, I'm rising up. Okay. Slowly but surely, just like the morning star. It rises and when it hits seven o'clock, seven is perfection. The daylight comes and you'll never see that star fall again. You'll only see it rise every day in the darkness and bring forth the light. Because the Lord shall be a light unto me. So that's why I'm on, I love the most high and I only keep, stick to his words, you know. You know, I do that now. I, I just I rip off all the all the Freemason um, all the Freemason stuff. You gotta watch out for the Freemasons, all these uh, secret societies, and all these high class rulers. They need this, but they they stuffed up. They should have burnt the Bible. Mm, they thought they were part of it. They try to mold us. You know, they stone masons, trying to trying to mason the world, trying to carve it and mold it. 
Mm. So I'm gonna read that one again. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna go up to um Micah seven verse seven. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Mm -hmm. And he heard, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she, that is mine enemy, shall see it, and shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? <laughs> mine eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down as the myrrh of the streets. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. You know, the Most High is here to build us up. Build us up to be coming out of our Yama, our two, our Yaha. So, there's cool stuff about our Father, about our God. You know, He won't lie to you, He'll tell you the truth. He's not the author of confusion. He's not, it's, it's just simple. People have changed the truth of God into a lie and took away the simplicity of how it is. Mm -hmm. I've come from the dark into the light, manifesting that light, mm, manifestation through the word. So, uh, let's get Zephaniah 3 verse 8. Ah, oh, Zephaniah 3 verse 8. Therefore, Wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Wait upon me, saith the Lord. I'm going to read Zephaniah 3 verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I write a death. So lucky. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Mm. So that's what the Most High said he's gonna, he's gonna, it's the big payback. The big payback. So the, the Most High has got our backs. And he's here to give the big payback. He's going to be destroying these nations with the fire. And the fire is this word. He already gave you water. You know, gave water. Now we're going to give fire. And it's the truth. And it's judgment. Shame. Mm. And, 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 and that's to the other nations. But us Israelites, we're going to get the fire as well. You're gonna get ref re refined, you know. You gotta get baked again. You're gonna burn off all their wickedness. You're gonna um, get molded. The Most High is gonna be molding us like a sword, man. He's gonna be beating you. He's gonna put you into the into the fire. And he's gonna pull you out and beat you up some more. You know, mold you into shape till you're ready as a sharp blade to go upon the world and then speak His word unto the world and then stab Him in the spirits. And Cut down all the great strongholds of all the oppressors and all the enemies, and we're just gonna be full of fire as a nation and as a people. Mm. Like you gotta learn the prophecies. Like I can see pretty far into the future now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But first and foremost, you gotta know the most high. You, know? you ought to obey God, brothers and men. That was the first precept I brought out today. So you ought to obey God, brothers and men. So. This is, this is it, you know, this is it, obey this, just look at it, you can't read 
get one of the brothers to read it out. And if they, if you have a question, you have to say it because when you have a question, that means you don't know yet. You haven't got an answer. Yeah, so always when you have a question, say something because it can, it's got to um, make you understand the answer. Yeah. So don't sit there and just believe, believe, believe. You have to actually read, study. Yeah. Just study this, that's it. Most I said himself, you don't even learn all these histories, all these archaeologies, all this, all this man-made proof. It's called man-made proof. They're trying to um, they're trying to make themselves look. They're trying to make themselves the Israelites. It's like how they made a white Jesus. They made everyone in the Bible white people. I mean, these people ain't even white, man. Like this is white. You know. Shit, I'm almost the same color as them. They red. Mm, but I got melanin on my skin. I go dark in the sun. They get burnt in the sun. So that's proof the most higher and light them all. But I saved that song for later. I'm talking about the most high. Mm, any meat? Any more meat? I know it's... I got a good meat. This is a good meat. We'll go to Daniel. This is good meat. Okay, Daniel... Yeah. Cause King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, this is a heathen. King Nebuchadnezzar, he just, just get it. Daniel. Damn, I can't remember. Twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-four. Use this preset. I've never used this preset. Do I? Oh, it was in chapter three. Wonder why. Chapter two, verse forty-seven. Ah, yep. Found it. Sorry, sorry. It's lucky. This is Daniel. Uh, chapter 2 verse 47 the king answered unto Daniel and said of a truth it is that your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets seeing thou couldst reveal this secret so even the greatest one of the greatest heathen kings of all time acknowledged our God as the God of gods. You know, that's why the white man believes in our God, because they know our God is the God of gods. You know, everybody who all these heathen nations who believe in our God actually know that he's real, you know, they believe in him more than us. You know, even Satan himself turned himself into an angel of light, you know, look the white man, you know, he's a caveman and then he became a, a copycat, you know. So we were a light unto them from a cave piece, you know, they were just barbarian people, they were violent, they're still violent, all they want is blood, you know, they love to fight, they love to show off, you know, that's an Edomite, that's a typical Edomite, you know, Esau was a man of the field, you know, he was out there, crazy fellow, you know, they think they're the shit, you know, and they're jealous of us because we're the chosen ones and they not, so they infiltrated our culture, customs and all that time, make us fall asleep, go to sleep, but, you know, my father did that, not you, yeah, you know, look at that, that just popped out, I, I just opened the book, it popped out, so I'm going to read it, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the spirit itself beareth, beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. We are the spirit bearers of Christmas, you know. I know my father, I keep his commandments, you know. I know my enemies, I know this dude, I know the, I know the Moabites, I know the Ammonites, I know the Ishmaelites, I know um, who's oppressing who, I know who's on whose team, 
know who's against me, who's against them, who's with me, who's not. So the most high in a lie, he's telling me everything and everything's coming to play. Everything's true. Everything's uh, brought forth as uh, prophecy. And um, I'm going to... I'm, a, I'm an example of his power, you know. Um, through six crip, SBC Otara, they call Taff, you know, we're bad men. We're bad men, look at that. But, look at Paul, look at David, they're all bad men too. A lot of these men in the Bible are bad men too. The Moses, hey, Moses saw one of the boys getting chucked down from the, from the police, so Moses went up and killed him. You know, Moses was looking like left, looking right, looking around before, looking around before he goes and slays that police. You know, that damn Egyptian. You know, so Moses was out there. You know, he's just like, he's one of the homies like us. You know, he is, he's our, he's our, he's our Tupuna, you know, he's our bro. You know, we were bad men, but what we did all the time is repent, turn back. You know, we always repented, looked at the laws, I oh, studied the commandments, I oh, yeah. This is what the only thing we should be doing is studying the commandments. Ah, oh, yeah. Commandments make commandments are pure and true. So I'm gonna get some more of the. Let's go to Exodus because Exodus 20 tells you. you know, Exodus 20. Twenty and two. And he says, this is Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, and it reads, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So the Most High, he's the one who will get us out of Egypt. Egypt means captivity. The word Egypt is a Greek word that means Egyptos. So they called, it's the house of Egyptos. It's not a place and all this and all that, like they, they've, uh, do all this fucking crazy ass movies and like uh, images of the Most High's Word when the Most High's Word is prophetic and it's talking about when you're in oppression and in captivity or as a slave, as a bondman, he's the one who raised you up and got you out of it. He's the one who can do that then and he's the one who can do that now. He did it then and proved it, proved it to Maui, proved it to Moses. Um, now he's about to prove it to you. Again, he's going to get us out of this captivity that we're in. This oppression that we're under, you know. In Maui's days, everyone's back was bent and shit. And Maui had to push the sky off the people and slay the sun, the, the dude ruling over us. You know, smack them up with the jawbone, smash them over with the word. In Maui's stories hasn't happened yet. They have and they haven't. Keep those secrets secret. But let's go to Deuteronomy. Five and six. Deuteronomy five, verse six, and it reads, "I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage." Thou, same thing. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So he's the guy who gets us out of here. It's our God. Our God's the God of God. This is written. You know? It is written. And you know, I've got to get it again. Deuteronomy 10, 17. 10, 17. Just in case you forgot. But this is. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and a terrible, which regardeth not persons. And this is verse 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear, by his name. He is thy praise. And he is thy God. That hath done 
for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. All the terrible things, our eyes have seen it. A pestilence, uh, a white man here, you know, oppressing us. Just, you know, when, when he came, you know, when we saw him, we, we, we were straight away like, oh, damn, we cursed. What's, what's Esau doing here? Oh shit, we must be under the curse. Mm. So we've witnessed his wrath upon us, his judgment. You know, we're the actual witnesses of how terrible our God is. You know, you don't want to listen to him, he'll kick your ass. I gotta get that, really. The curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. I'm just going to read some curses. <laughs> Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So the Israelites should be cursed in the city for not keeping the commandments. So whoever's at the bottom of the city is the Israelites. And that's my people. Cursed shalt thou be in the fields. The field is the work workplace. You know, it's hard to get jobs if you're moldy. Everyone who all the mean job is not our people. When you're working for somebody else, there's a curse. Paying taxes is a curse, you know. I'll drop down to, oh, let's go to 46, this is what you all need to know really, and they shall be upon thee for a sign, so these curses are a sign, and a wonder, and a wonder to make you think, and upon thy seed forever, so these curses are upon our seed forever, mm. he doesn't lie remember? told you about our father, about our God. He doesn't lie, remember? He just told you, if you don't listen, keep my law, statutes, and commandments, cursed shalt thou be. Nay, we, the first, the first law, we break it. What's the first law? He's our God and only our God. We're breaking that law, we not, it means we're breaking the rest of the laws. So, first, learn the first two commandments, and then you'll, if you can do the first two commandments, You'll do every other commandment with these because you'll fear the Lord, you'll love the Lord. That's showing love, remember? But, you know, start off with small commandments like wearing your beard, getting you some fringes, um, you know. You gotta, sh what, you gotta wash straight after sex, that's a law. You gotta change your seats if you had sex on it all the time, you know. Um, you see the health laws, there's food laws, like don't eat, no eating pork, no eating uh tuna you know you know bottom bottom feeders we don't eat bottom feeders we're from the royal peoples we we are holy people we're meant to eat godly mm. be godly so there's that's what these laws are for so this is first 46 and they shall be upon thee for a sign so a sign is uh, it's like, um, it's telling you who you are, like, if you're cursed, put your hand up, and then, oh, yeah, you're, you're fit all these curses, oh, I yeah, you're an Israelite, and that's the sign, these curses, and for a wonder to make you think and know, and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he hath destroyed thee. I'm just going to keep reading. This is verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation 
of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favour to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, and flocks of thy sheep, until he hath destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustedest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. So what I just read right there, prophecy fulfilled. We fit that curse, you know. The white man coming here from the, uh, we'll call him the red man, because that's who he is in the Bible. The Bible calls him the red bloody man. So that, that is the nation that came from afar, as swift as an eagle, in a tongue we didn't understand. And he shall eat the fruit of our cattle, and he's going to eat the fruit of our land. We ain't going to get nothing. And he shall besiege thee in all our gates. You know, and he shall besiege thee in all our gates throughout the land. And he shall eat everything. You know, and that's that's the truth. The most high ain't lying to you. He said, if you're going to listen, I'm going to send him. It says, and he sent them. So he's telling the truth. That's ticks, 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 ticks. Prophecies fulfilled. See, and this is another one, you know. So that the man is tender. So that the this is verse fifty four. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. You know, you got an eye problem, cause you got an eye problem. Hey, eye problem. You know, what you looking at? Uh? You fuck. Ooh, that's how we were, you know, that's how the people are to each other, it's hard to look at each other, but we can look, we look at the white man, they see each other, way. we see the Jew-ish, look at each other, hey, uh, hi, everyone's looking at each other nicely, but our own people, we look at each other, like, okay, look, we're not fucking eye problem, okay, you know, this is, I already know this shit, this is way back, this is, you know, this is why I don't like these people who teach us, because they taught us dumb shit, they didn't teach us our God and who our heritage is and what we are unto this world, mm. so you know, this is another curse, get the eye problem curse, you know, so that the man that is tender among you, you know, we were tender people, you know, so much, you know, I was smiling, you know, we that's why we got nice smiles because we're all smiling people all the time. That's why we got nice teeth. We always smile all the time, you know. We're just we're happy people who toward one another, we're families, you know. We knew we knew of our people, we knew of Marvel, we knew of all our ancestors, we knew of the color. And then once we started breaking the laws, boom, the most I put the spirit on each other. And now we all looking at each other. We were tender. And now that's called a bitch nigga. The most I says they so that the man that is tender and that is tender among you and very delicate, see very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. Hmm, I problem dig so he calls them fucking bitch niggas. Bitch niggas if you looking at each other like this, you're bitch niggas, yeah. And towards the wife of his bosom. You know, even getting eye problems towards the wife of his bosom. That's why a lot of us had the curse on us. We can buy what's our moms up to all the time. What's our missus up to all the time. What's our girlfriend up to. That's a curse. That's a curse, man. So, so when you renew your soul, renew your mind, all those curses will come off you. You'll start looking at people better. Like you. you know, you start, you know, I, you don't, Start looking at your people evilly. You won't start look hating on your own men. Mm. And towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. A lot of, lot of, you know, a lot of our uh, fathers left their, their kids. See, that's a curse. You know, uh, what do you call them? Single parent households. And baby mamas. A lot of baby mamas. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he had nothing left in him in the siege, and in the strictness wherein thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Even the woman, the tender and delicate woman among you, which 
would not adventure to sit the sole of their foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. You know, our women used to be delicate and beautiful, they talk, you know, they talk nice, they were shamefaced, they couldn't really expose themselves, you know, they kept it to themselves. Real mighty women, those women. You know, her eyes shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for the want of all things secretly in the siege of Amstraitly, wherein, by wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. So, you know, that's why a lot of women like being solo moms because they get all the benefits of their children, man. They start using their children for money, you know. I need some money. Oh, I could never eat. Hey, she's gonna get that money and go use drugs or something. Go fuck some random nitty. It's just the world. This is the way it is. It's the curses, dude. It's just going back to most high court curses upon our people. So these are curses that our people need to get off us. Cause it's a nationality curse, hey. If thou will not, if thou will not, if thou, this is the. Uh, 28 verse, Deuteronomy 28 verse 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. So it's Yahab, Ha, Aroha, Yama. Then the Lord will make thy place wonderful. And the plagues of thy sea, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, sicknesses, and of long continuance. You know, we've been through the struggle for a long time, we've been through the curse for a long time. It's a continuation because we, as a nation, we keep all these laws that are written in this book. You know? We don't want to do it. So, that's how you identify the power of the Most High. That's His judgment and His curses. You know. So, I'll go to um, Psalms 147, verse 19. Psalms 147, verse 19. And it reads, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So he shows it showed this word unto Jacob. And his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His judgments is what? The curses. Hmm. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He ain't dealing with any nation. If this nation you know, ain't no Chinese cursed in the city. Ain't no white man cursed in the city. Ain't no Hindus cursed in the city. You know, not as a collective, not as a nation. It's a collective and as a nation, it's only the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's a sign that they are cursed and they are the true Israelites. No, no red skinned devil is an Israelite. That's for damn sure. But I'm going to read it again. Psalms 147 verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, the statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Phew. See, the Most High has set this all up for us to overthrow them. And claim our book back. You know, like a thief in the night. You know. This is ours. This is ours. Yeah. So I'm going to finish it off. With, um, what should I finish it off with? Ah, yeah. 
Let's do a Let's do a shout out. Psalms. Yeah, let's do a shout out. Let's get Psalms 28 verse 9. He's already on it. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. So, I pray to the most high power. Please lift up my people forever. You know, these need help. The best medicine in the world is words. Words come from the mind, they go out, become manifest into reality, and words can go into other people's ears and into their mind, and then we can help them and fix them. The best medicine for anything that's um, dealing with the mind is words, not drugs and all this other crap. The real medicine is words. You know, people like good words, people like smooth words, people like powerful words, people like you know, some angry words, people like arguments, you know. The true medicine for everybody is the words they speak and say. You know, so us uh, Israelites from the twelve tribes scattered abroad. Um, it's time to really push hard into this truth. You know, really push hard. Start um, supporting uh, Kaitani Farm here in New Zealand. With the we're holding it down for the twelve tribes here. We're the first to to wake up and we're the last from this island. And to all my people on this island, we just need to start waking up because I've been, I was waking up a while ago and I've been waiting for you to wake up and it's taking too long now. I gotta, that's why I'm out here, I gotta shake these, shake these all up, wake the fuck up, bro. slap you the houses on fire, shake your head up. So I gotta get out there on the streets, I gotta go to Hui, I gotta travel up and around the countries. Um, already been working with people from overseas with the, with the Israelite tribes around the world scattered abroad I've had brothers come over to New Zealand to come stay with me and learn the word from our side of the you know our gate outside of the world because these four corners of the world and we're one of the corners you know so yeah I have to defend my faith I have to defend the word and prove who we are to you know to each other you know because you gotta be you gotta be um, suffering these curses, there's a lot of things to prove if you're an Israelite, you can't just say you're an Israelite and you fuck up your back like this and then now you got to fit these certain requirements. If you're living good in this world, you ain't an Israelite. You know? And if you're an Edomite, you ain't an Israelite. Like a Caucasian, you ain't an Israelite. And some of you, it's not about white or black, you know, it's about heritage, it's about who you come from. You know, we don't come from lands, we come from our mom and our father. Well, we're in our mum, we're in our father, so that's where we come from. You know, that we all got to come back to common sense, common knowledge, you know. I'm not mixed anything, I am my father. You know, I'm not half anything or nothing. I'm a fucking, I'm an apple. <laughs> just like my dad, he's the apple tree. You know, and we're just the same seed animal, you know, so consistent, consistent seed. You know, we're here to partake in the holy war. And um, we more should be thankful to be part of this holy war. You know, we're not just bystanders. We're actually part of it and we're the biggest part of it. You know, we're, we're here to show the world that even us, even us can show the world that we can run from the dust. Even us can have the light. Mm, so... I give all praises to the God of God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, in the name of His only Son, who the world calls Christ. You know, I thank my fathers in all them that left us this word. And shout out to all the brothers out there who's out, um, you know, really working hard on this truth. Shout out to the brothers who's keeping the, keeping the hard, you know. You know Shout out to the brothers who's actually wanting to seek this knowledge and shout out to all those who's listening, watching. Um, this is just, you know, the fire is upon me, man. It must be like 2 o'clock in the morning right now. So, all praise to the Messiah.